Summary of the Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane The sun rises above a riverbank camp that has been occupied by new soldiers who are inexperienced and wearing blue Union uniforms. These soldiers are members of the 304th Regiment from New York. Jim Conklin, a tall soldier, tells the others that he heard that the company will soon be in battle because that's what the generals want to happen. Some troops in the regiment believe the rumor, but others don't trust it and are sick of infantrymen trying to guess what their commanders will do. Henry Fleming, a young private, listens to the argument and then goes back to his bunk to think. He joined the army against his mother's wishes because he wanted to fight in great wars. Henry is now afraid that he will be weak and run away while they are fighting. He comes back to ask Jim and Wilson, another soldier who is loud and cocky, if they ever worry about running away. Jim says he'll follow the other guys. He can't wait for a fight to see how brave he is. In the end, the troop does march and sets up camp in the woods. Wilson gets scared when he knows a fight is coming and nervously gives Henry a packet of letters to send back to Wilson's family in case Wilson dies. Soon, an advance brigade of blue troops runs by in a crazy retreat, which makes Henry doubt himself. Henry fires quickly as the gray enemy comes through the woods, making him feel like he's just a part of a machine. The enemy runs away, and the troops are happy for each other. But then the enemy charges again, and Henry turns and runs away with a group of scared blue troops. He thinks that running away was the right thing to do as he does it. He thinks that it is normal to want to protect yourself and that the generals and troops who stayed to fight were stupid. When the retreat stops, Henry hears that his regiment did protect their position, even though the odds were against them. Henry sneaks off into the woods by himself and finds the body of a soldier in a chapel of trees. He is ashamed. Henry can't believe his eyes when he sees ants crawling over the scarred face. He runs away and meets a group of hurt soldiers who are running away. A worn-out man asks Henry about his wounds as they walk along, but Henry pulls away from him because he feels so terrible. Henry secretly wants his wound to be a red badge of courage. Henry sees a badly hurt soldier who looks like a ghost and won't accept any help. When Henry finds out that the man is Jim Conklin, he offers to help. Jim runs off into the nearby fields, and Henry and the hurt man follow him. Jim dies. The hurt man, who is getting worse, keeps asking Henry about his wound, but Henry leaves him. Henry comes across a big group of blue soldiers running away close to the battlefield. When he tries to grab one to ask why, why, the soldier hits Henry on the head with his gun to get away. Henry is bleeding and lost, so he walks around looking for a safe place. Henry is led back to his regiment's camp by an unknown, happy soldier. Henry tells his troops that he was shot in the head when he wasn't. Wilson, who is calm and quiet, treats his wound. The next morning, Wilson calls Henry and asks for his letters. Henry quickly feels strong, proud, and ready to fight, while his friend is embarrassed about being afraid of death. Their company goes back to the fight and is involved in a very loud and difficult to hear battle. Henry goes crazy and keeps shooting even after the enemy runs away. His friends are amazed by him, and the regiment's fiery lieutenant hails his bravery. Henry is confused and happy at the same time. He got over his fears without even realizing it. During a break in the fighting, Henry and Wilson hear a general insulting their regiment for fighting like mule drivers. They really want to show him he's wrong. They are told to make a risky charge against the enemy lines, and many of Henry's friends are killed. The color guard is shot and falls, but Henry grabs the regimental battle flag and leads the tired regiment to a close win. Afterward, other soldiers hear the leaders of the regiment praising Henry and Wilson's bravery. Still, Henry is mad at the officer who made fun of him, and he dreams of being killed in a great fight as a way to get back at him. A group of gray troops jumps over a key fence across the field. Henry leads his frantic troops to beat the enemy soldiers by running with the flag. Wilson takes the battle flag from the enemy. Everyone is happy for each other and thinks they were men. It is then told to go back over the ground it had gained all the way to its original camp on the river. 
Henry thinks about his successes and the guilt that still haunts him. He feels grown and calm, and he wants peace. About the author Steve Crane was born in Newark, New Jersey, on November 1, 1871. Crane went to a prep school that was kind of like a military school and a few failed years of college, but he dropped out to become an adventurer and writer in the real world. Crane was known for his unique writing style and deep exploration of social and psychological issues in his poems, short stories, and novels. Crane also did a lot of traveling as a foreign reporter for newspapers, writing about things like war and poverty. Crane died young, at age 28. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.